Hey guys, and welcome back to EQ Planes, and today I'll be reviewing the Air Transit A330-200 in economy class from Montreal to Paris. I had just gotten off a flight from Calgary on their A321CO, and definitely looking forward to seeing how the A330 stacks up against that. Last time I was in Montreal was to fly Air Canada's A330 back in March of 2022, and let's just say the airport is much busier than it was then. The airport had plenty of good options for both eating and shopping, however, I did feel that the airport was quite congested. However, with that being said, we did make our connection quite easily between the domestic and international terminals. But without further ado, let's take a closer look at the plane that will be taking us across the Atlantic today, that being an almost 25 years old Air Transat A330 registered Charlie Golf Uniform Foxtrot Romeo. This particular A330 was originally delivered to Emirates until it was then handed over to Air Transat in 2016. The aircraft was also leased by Condor for a brief period of time in 2019 and 2018 as well before then heading back to Air Transat. Now one thing I will quickly mention before boarding is that Air Transat seems to be pretty wishy-washy with uh, seat selection as on many of our flights with Air Transat. If you uh, select a seat they'll tend to change you from it anyways so that's definitely something to look out for. But without further ado, let's step on board this Air Transit A330 and see what they have to offer. When it comes to the configuration of Air Transit's A330s, they seat 12 people in club class in a 2x2x2 configuration with the economy section seating 320 people in a 333 configuration. Today I'd be seated with my family in row 16A. I would definitely recommend row 16 as it does provide a pretty good window view. However, 15 and 17 I would not say the same as depending on the configuration you may end up without a window in those rows. When it comes to my initial thoughts on the cabin, it was definitely a bit of an older cabin. However, the mood lighting was pretty strong which tends to make older cabins feel a little bit newer and it was pretty clean as well. When it comes to the seats, I'll get into more detail about those when we're in the air. But in the meantime, enjoy this taxi and takeoff out of Montreal. Now that we're in the air, let's take a closer look at the seats. Now first and foremost, let's talk about the leg room. I'm almost 6 foot 3 and it was definitely a little bit tight for me. On the way back, I did get to sit in the bulkhead row which is considered an extra leg room seat. However, really it isn't all that much better as despite having more uh, knee room, you have less foot room. When it comes to the tray table, it did hang a little bit low on the knees. When it comes to seat comfort, although the seats did have fairly decent padding on them, they were a little bit on the narrow side which is mostly because Air Transit configures their A330s in a 333 configuration instead of how most legacy carriers do in a 242. When it comes to recline, the seat was pretty decent, however, nothing special. However, luckily the seats did come with in-seat power, which is definitely a plus. Air Transit's A330s also do have a pretty decent IFE system, which is certainly a surprise on a leisure carrier like this. But overall, despite Air Transit seats not really holding up to some of the mainline carriers like Air Canada or WestJet seats on a long haul flight, it certainly isn't bad either, especially considering their tickets are often much, much cheaper. And when it comes to what's in the back seat pocket, you just have your standard safety card and air sickness bag. Now when it comes to in-flight service, they did come around with free drinks at uh, many different points during the flight, which is always a nice touch. They also come around with various items available for purchase like earbuds, which my brother and dad had invested in. 
Air Transit does also serve a meal on these long-haul transatlantic routes, which actually was pretty good both times around. This time it consisted of a chocolate bread roll and some pasta, with the way back consisting of the same, albeit this time with a chicken dish. But now, with dinner done, let's head for a loo review. The lavatories were a little bit on the dirty side, however, they were a good size. Another thing I'll mention is that the lavatory's orientation is a little bit different depending on the configuration that you're flying on, as Air Transit has two very similar but slightly different configurations on their A330s. Now, as the sun started to rise over the Atlantic on this red-eye flight, we were definitely treated to what was some uh, rather extreme morning mood lighting. However, along with that, as we were nearing landing, they did come around with a small little breakfast item, that being a piece of banana bread, along with a drink of your choice. But now, as we near Paris, let me briefly leave you with a little bit of landing footage and stick around for my final thoughts on the flight. Now, overall, when it comes to my final thoughts on Air Transit's A330 transatlantic product, it definitely is decent. It certainly isn't as good as some of the products you would find on legacy carriers like Air Canada, but it could be worse, and given the price that Air Transit puts these flights at, I would say it's definitely worth it for me. Another interesting perk about flying Air Transit in and out of Paris Charles de Gaulle is that you will get to board by Air Stair, which is always fun. But yeah, when it comes to whether or not I'd recommend this to somebody else, it definitely depends on the price point. However, it certainly isn't a terrible option. Anyways, I'd like to thank you guys for watching and hope to see you guys around next time.